for five minutes. I'm here for Thank you very much. You keep it the whole time. Yeah, no, no. No, what we were talking about, I, my most sublime experiences are when two historical epochs collide, so that you talk about something new, but you have only the old language, like, sorry, and with just two minutes. In ex-Yugoslavia, when communism was already falling apart, this is my favorite anecdote, uh, a student radio, which was dissident, anti-communist, invited an old communist, the true cadre, you know, like, and this guy terribly wanted to please the young generation. You know, like, and they, of course, asked him stupid questions like, what's your relation to sexuality and so on. So this guy knew he had to say something positive about it. But the only language he disposed of was the old, and he did something wonderful. He said sentences like, uh, touching women between their legs is a great instigation for my struggle for socialism and so on. You know, like <laughs> praising sex, but in the communist jargon. I love this moment, you know, <laughs> when two languages, uh, uh, another story, then while you get there. Uh, uh, you know, you may remember it, in the 80s there was this great miracle in Bosnia, uh, Medjugorje, Virgin Mary appeared. In Bosnia, communists were hardliners. So they didn't want to exploit it commercially, which was a catastrophe, because Italian uh, uh, travel agents earned billions. In Slovenia, communists were already business-oriented. So there was a small statue close to airport of Ljubljana, of Virgin Mary, which started to do what they are supposed to do, a little bit of blood moving and so on. So Slovene communists were delighted. We will build a hotel there, business and so on. And then a catastrophe happened. The local priest, in whose domain this happened, wrote a text claiming, no, this is not an authentic miracle, this is superstition. And then I have it. I wonder, in the communist weekly journal, they attacked this priest for non-patriotic behavior. Like, fuck you, your duty economic to help is to proclaim this is a miracle. <laughs> Who are you to play some atheist games here and so on? I talk too much, stop. <laughs> so we're reconvening this morning and picking up uh, where we left off last night. Uh, this is the event uh, sponsored by CHCI, uh, and uh, time is short, so I, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, use time for an introduction, but let's go to the first question, uh, which is by one of our hosts, uh, John Vigneault Smythe, will be going uh, around the room as much as time permits with uh, questions for Jean-Pierre and uh, Slavoj. But he uh, should so have more time, because I talked too no, much no, yesterday. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, so, uh, who are you to I say no? You are not free. Okay. So our, uh, <laughs> Nobody means a matter of density of uh, contents. You can. Okay. Ah, we'll talk you yeah. mean to say, yeah, you yeah, say in one but sentence but exactly. more than I in half an no, hour. No, no, yeah. no, not you, not you. But <laughs> I mean. Just answer the questions. Yeah. So, um, so our, our, our first question is from one of our hosts, John Vigneault Smythe. I'll leap into it with so little time. Uh, Savoy, recently you have said about the Mark of the Sacred by Jean-Pierre that uh, in a well, in an enlightened, well-organized space, well. this book should be printed and freely distributed in all schools. And how this is my Stalinist dreams, yeah, you know. You could hardly praise but a work uh, more highly yeah. than Except that. Except that I, I won't have any fees then. I I I that's a, that's a problem. That's that that we will see here how seriously you are against capital, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want, as they say, to have a cake and <laughs> yeah. to eat it. No? Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. And you're also pointedly sort of combining <laughs> the state with the sacred there, I, I yeah. see. Could you explain, you've explained already a little bit, why you think his work is so important? And could you perhaps add um, something about what you call, uh, I think in Left for Nothing, the limitations of his approach when it comes to things like class antagonism? No, okay, very briefly. Uh, uh, first, uh, I, I would have to speak for half an hour, so I will just <laughs> give clearly emphasize one aspect, not the central one, that I yeah. admired with you <laughs> and that I was immediately ready to link with Hegel. This idea of uh, the yeah. immanent reversal, like exactly. in principle, the sacred in the sense of religious is, should be above the political, yeah. but within the political, yeah. it turns around. Yes, and exactly. this is what, in a way, the elementary trick of Hegel's dialectic, and this is also how we should read Antigone. My friend Fred Jameson pointed <coughs> out that this split that we see in Antigone between this Divi uh, religious divinities, Antigone, and the political aspect, Creon, 
is not a mark of a decay of some original Greek state, but it's constitutive of the state. Antigone yeah. is not a play which signals that the state is falling apart, but it's the, you have to have that gap between religious and power precisely to have the state functioning. It's yeah. constitutive of the state. So yeah. this is one aspect which I developed in detail, which I find incredible. As to disagreement, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss here, because let me just show my cards. Of course, the way I use the terms is to annoy people. When I, 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 did you notice that all my last big books, the subtitle of each one is something to do with dialectical materialism. Now, yeah. I'm the first one to know that if there ever was a totally ridiculous philosophy, totally useless, it's dialectical materialism, no? So, I may, so a little bit more seriously, I think the difference is not so great. You remember when yesterday I provoked Kim with the question mm -hmm. like, fuck off, tell me where you stand. And mm -hmm. I agree with his answer. I'm a very strange communist. I'm a negative communist. Mm -hmm. I think commons are our problem today. Commons in the sense of I enumerated them. For example, it's clear that capitalism will not be able to solve the problem in the way we have it today of, of of uh, intellectual property is destroying it. We are almost entering communism there, or, or, uh, 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 or financial flow, or, for example, ecology, uh, new forms of apartheid. That's the basic fact of me today. The more capitalism is global, the more new walls are emerging. <coughs> so I'm only saying we have problems, and the Fukuyama model will not work. And incidentally, Fukuyama himself, the last time I met him, is no longer a Fukuyama. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a clear solution. I'm certainly totally sure that, as my friend Alain Badiou emphasizes, the 20th century is over. We yeah. cannot simply return neither to Stalinist communism. So uh, I'm like you, I'm here, uh, I'm here open. I'm, uh, I'm enlightened catastrophist like you. All we can say is that if we let things flow, the way they are moving now, we are approaching what? Well, even Hollywood knows it. Did you notice how all the big latest hits of Hollywood are uh, uh, some dystopian movies about a society with extreme class struggle, Hunger Games, Elysium, and so yeah, on. Yeah. And all I see is your model. We have to accept in precise terms that you describe it, catastrophe as inevitable yeah. and then maybe who knows how to do something without any clear formula i like here napoleon you know on attack et puis on le verra you exactly, know yes. that's all we can do yeah, yeah. where i uh, i agree with marx that capitalism has a self-destructive dynamics yeah. i don't think that at least in Marxist term, his model of working class as universal which will appear as an agent works i no longer have this Teleological <coughs> trust. I'm more on Walter Benjamin's side. You know, when Benjamin said in one of his famous passages that, referring to this uh, unfortunate model of the train of history, that today the task is not to be on the train of history moving forward, but to pull the emergency bra brake, you know. So here, I'm not trying now to squeeze out, but here I think that, uh, like, May I turn this to a question for you? Yeah. Uh, you obviously do locate the problem in also global capitalist dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. What do. does this mean for you politically? It's the same question as yesterday. <coughs> How can we overcome capitalism? Or is it the pessimist answer you gave yesterday, and it's also my, that yeah. I don't see, see a clear agenda what kind of political party we should constitute a global movement. What I only radically opposed is, as I hinted yesterday, is this third world bullshit, you know, some local culture there which resists and so on. They are the worst. Th th uh, if there is something very easy to do for capitalism, it's to swallow them. Capi uh, today's global capitalism is not we all eat hamburgers. It's we all have our small cultures. What unites us is the market. I talk too much, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how to move beyond capitalism? This is a question I've never really asked myself. 
Yeah, but you imply that we should do it. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> but um, in my case, in my own own personal <coughs> life, although the problems are absolutely global, we agree mm. on that. I do it piecemeal, um, and I w while keeping in mind that this avoids a lot of very important problems, um, and I'm deeply committed in a series of uh, actions. Mm that are not political in the sense, in the stupid sense of yeah. belonging to a political party. Mm. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I said yesterday, uh, I was referring to my country, there, are, there is not one single political offer which might correspond to what I'd like mm -hmm. uh, to happen. Uh, uh, a series of examples, but there is nothing original in that. I'm the S I'm, um, I've accepted a position which gives me a lot of influence, although backstage, I'm chairing the ethics committee of the French High Authority of, of, on, um, uh, on nuclear safety and security. Huh? Uh, as you may know, um, uh, French electricity is 80% uh, of French electricity is produced in nuclear power plants. Mm. And so we have uh, lots of experts. We are present, and I went there uh, three times each, uh, to um, Chernobyl and uh, Fukushima. Um, and um, and in my personal itinerary, when I was a young man, uh, I was an anti-nuclear activist. Today, today, um, have in mind climate change. Huh? And when you put these two things together, you have a serious problem. Because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. If, you wa if we want to, I mean, just a figure among many others, if we want to avoid a major, major climatic uh, disaster before the end of the, this century, we have to restrain ourselves. I mean, when I say we, hum humankind, mm. we have to refrain from extracting from the ground more than one third of the uh, remaining fossil resources: coal, gas, and um, uh, and, uh, oil. and oil, of oh, course, yeah, yeah. including including what is called and which is so successful apparently here. Uh, how do you call it? Um, fracking. fracking. No, but the, uh, the, the thing itself. Uh, shale. Shale. Shale, shale, shale yeah. gas and shale. Oh, mm. Thank you. Um, uh, so I'm trying to solve those problems, which take the form of uh, dilemmas or quasi-impossibilities. Quasi I'm also a member of the French section of the um, IPCC, International Panel on Climate Change. This, uh, this is my, in sense, political commitment in the, uh, given the word political, um, uh, not the traditional sense of political parties, but of action in the city. Huh? Um, this is backstage. Very few people know about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I don't care if I can change the world. Piecemeal. Huh? In, uh, but piecemeal at the same time, those problems are absolutely fundamental. Huh? Uh, because if really uh, there is not a scarcity of fossil resources, as everyone keeps repeating, but an overabundance, the market can, well, let's suppose that the market can do what it's supposed to do, mm. namely allocate scarce resources. But here we're not dealing with the case of scarcity. We're dealing with the case of overabundance. There are three times too many fossil mm. resources. So how do you uh, solve that problem? Not with the market. So it's, uh, yeah. it's in itself, this example shows, I mean, illustrates a radical critique of what the market can do and cannot mm. do, uh, et cetera. I could multiply the number of illustrations of what I'm trying to do, <coughs> most of the time backstage. But maybe we'll move on to our next question, if we could, Marsha. So this actually follows up on Sylvia's question to you. I appreciate the pragmatic places where you're intervening because then you're intervening in in, in very kind of localized, well, not localized, but well, demonstrated to, to... Yeah, it's not. But I, I'm also interested in the abstract way that you approach it. Oh, yes, of course. And um, the, the, the in, in, in this book, you critique what you call economistification. Yes, exactly. The way a mystified, theologized understanding of the economy exactly. is coming to replace the political mm. realm yeah. as the arena where we accept that somehow in, in thinking economically, we will do a better job of solving our problems than if we engage with the, the, the more traditional yeah. political yeah. Uh, realm. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a brilliant critique and, and yeah. very convincing. But my question for you is, in articulating such a critique, do you see yourself as paying 
the Enlightenment goals further in trying to demystify the world by taking the demystification of God mm. transposed to the political realm, now transposed to the economy, where you're trying to demystify, kind of unmask the theological elements yes. in, in the way that we worship the economy. Yes. And, okay, so, so, so Baz, you, you would articulate your comments that way. In, in that case, Beloit, I'm, I'm curious how you understand and attempt to kind of apply that Enlightenment mm. rationality to the economy, given the way that you tend to construct political action in terms of mobilization of wealth. <coughs> mm-hmm. So do you believe, for example, with, with the kind of Gandhi's air, like do, do yeah. is it possible to unmask but, okay. the logical nature? You know, this abstract dimension, of course, it's mine. It's uh, That's my flesh, what I'm made of, so the stuff I'm made of, uh, because my formation, etc., etc. But you know what? These patterns, which when you see them drawn on the, on the board, or etc., which look highly abstract, they are, almost all of them, if not all of them, in uh, Slavoj's books. Um, I don't like that guy too much to whom you refer. No, 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 but you <laughs> and, well, when, you know, when I discovered Günther Anders' uh, work, yeah. um, it's, not, it's not translated into English, which is a scandal. Uh, it's more and more translated in, uh, in, into French, and I'm instrumental in that, uh, translating, editing, etc. Günther Anders was one of the three, um, uh, they are called uh, Heidegger's uh, children. Uh, the, the three of them, uh, the other three, are the other two are um, Hannah Arendt, much more famous, and Hans Jonas. Uh, we already mentioned Hans Jonas. So <coughs> the three of them, uh, German Jews, uh, students of a Nazi philosopher, and their relationship with Heidegger um, varied. I mean, uh, they didn't have the same evolution. As you know, uh, Hannah Arendt had a special <laughs> relationship with her master. Anyway. Uh, of the three, Günther Anders is the less um, known, the less famous, and particularly because it's not translated. Um, but when I discovered his work, a friend of mine, I almost sued him. I almost sued him because he had. I found there the uh, everything, all, all those abstract elements I was trying to put forward. And then I realized that he wrote these things in the 50s and 60s, so I couldn't really. Uh, I was not. Uh, yeah. So I refrain. The same with Zizek, except with uh, Slavoj, except that in that case I might have sued him because his works were more or less contemporary. No, but I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> but I mean, no, what is extraordinary is when you uh, realize um, um, a kindred uh, spirit. I mean, that there are kindred spirits. And uh, mm-hmm. let me take an example to be less abstract for a second. In this book here, uh, that's the only one I have uh, in a book form. All the others are here. I have uh, 20 books. Mm-hmm. I have not read them. Uh, uh, sorry, they are here in uh, my iPad, mm-hmm. huh? Amazon, etc. Okay, Kindle. Um, uh, that's the only one I have because it doesn't exist in Kindle form, strangely enough. Really? No, no, okay. Um, so there is a beautiful <laughs> passage, funny, about political correctness in this book and seduction. Okay, how do you put together in America? seduction and political correctness. Um, my little knowledge of uh, the American world, I know at least 10 cases of uh, professors, I mean of um, married couples who once were professor and student. So something might have Are have you happened. one of the 10? No, 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 no. I'm too coward, I'm too coward. Yeah, <laughs> but precisely, I had not read what you say about yeah. this. So the, the uh, I mean, the, it's paradoxical, and you w- might want to explain it better than I do, but um, okay, um, there is a prohibition. Eh? You don't try to seduce your female student. Oh, well, it, I suppose it's a heterosexual world, etc. You don't try to seduce your female student. Um, but if you cross a line, nevertheless, and attempt something, like seduction. There are two cases. Uh, She accepts, and for instance, you get married, or not, by the way, but, uh, um, no, sorry, she she refuses, and then uh, she might sue you, et cetera, et cetera, bad things happen, uh, or she might accept your seduction. If that is the case, if that is the case, retrospectively, one can say, that the line, there was no line crossed. 
there was no line crossed. It's not that the line has been crossed and it doesn't matter anymore. There has never been any line that was crossed. And Slavoj, no, this, and you know, uh, wh where I found this kind of um, metaphysics of time, in Bergson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah in Bergson. First and World War, how we close. Exactly. Yeah. And also in the philosophy of quantum mechanics. But that's why, okay, uh, let's skip to the. Uh, um, so it's not that the. Again, it's changing the past. Okay, it's an, one more example. There was a line, and it's not that there is no longer a line. It becomes true that there never was a line. You understand the huge difference? It's in Bergson and uh, his uh, most uh, famous student, Jean-Paul Sartre. This, uh, okay, so these are abstract figures. And depending on the talent of the writer, and Savoy has an incredible talent, you make it accessible to anyone. And any I think anyone can understand, although it's shocking, it's shocking, this idea that you can change the past. I mean, it's, uh, huh? um, but you cannot change it causally. That's what I would say. And Savoy goes so far as to say that in a world where political correctness is very strong, um, this phenomenon, phenomenon just described, it's more than a phenomenon, is older, stronger. Huh? It's precisely in a, word, in a world where you have this radical prohibition that they can disappear. Uh, it's not disappear in the sense that they are no longer there, in the sense that they were never there. OK, this is the abstract kind of uh, pattern that I'm interested in. And, but I do it in my own terms, writing, etc. And uh, Slavoj has, has this incredible talent <coughs> of making them uh, concrete by taking lots of examples uh, drawn from uh, daily life. Uh, it's, uh, that's your incredible talent, I may say. OK. Can that I briefly reply okay, please, to please, but please, with please, total please, agreement please. and at please. the same time connect? Uh, I, I found this example so interesting because you know what's my problem here that uh, without this dialectic of taking a risk crossing the line and then yeah. retroactively yeah. hoping that the line will retroactively disappear there is no proper process of seduction at some point someone has to make a gesture where you take a risk yes. either you will be accused of, uh, so now then debating with my friends, I tried to force them to imagine a purely politically correct seduction. And I got a clear <laughs> answer. It would have looked weirdly as a pure market uh, contract. A correct way would be for me to put it, for, for her, we negotiate, and so on. And so that you don't think that I'm kidding. <coughs> Julian Assange showed me such a document already exists in Sweden, which is the ultimate politically correct country. They had this problem. You know, what's so nice is that even things can retroactively become rape in Sweden. They, in their law, it says that if, let's say we, I don't want to be accused then of harassing you, any we, okay, the beautiful lady here where there is no one, we flirt <laughs> terribly, then we both want to go to bed. No problem here. I just know that she hates, let's say, Catholics. I'm a Catholic. So to make it easier, I fake to her, I tell her I'm a Protestant. I lie. And we go to bed, wonderful time, blah, blah. I'm not kidding. Two weeks later, she discovers that I lied to her that I'm a Catholic. Not only she can prosecute me, but even if she dragged me to bed, I become formally a rapist. And to prevent this, and Assange showed me the document, it's not yet the law, maybe they're not so crazy, but it already circulates in political circles there, a kind of a forum to fill in. Let's say I'm flirting with a lady. We want to do it, but just to make it sure, it's a forum. Name, date of birth, <laughs> religion, education, do you have AIDS, any illness? We both sign it up. We can do whatever we want. I find this vision pretty horrible. And even some liberal, not left-wing uh, feminists, like not Naomi Klein, the other one, Naomi Wolf, already made this point of how at its most 
rigid, inflexible. Political correctness approaches a pure market negotiation model. Which is why, uh, now the other thing where you, that you ask, I would, I am here, but this is a subtle point, we don't have time to go into it. I am pro-enlightenment to the end, as it were. So I want to ask you, probably I'm not the only one. Uh, how, the only problem I have with you, but I see the ambiguity is, if one looks this blurb like conversations of, <coughs> what they put on cover on your books. Yeah. It may sound as if you are pleading or uh, demanding, proposing some kind of, that's how it is put there, return to the sacred. I find ah. this, can you clarify your position oh, la, la, here? La, la, la. Yeah, is it, because yeah, no, I no, don't no, follow no. you here if you no, want no, that. No, 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 bro, oh, yes. And uh, even in the French, I mean, not even, especially in the French version, I was accused of that. I mean, accused. Yes, yes. Because it was I'm an accusation. You. No, 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 not at all. Uh, what I'm saying is that it's not one more book on the, I mean, I'm talking of the Mark of the Sacred, uh, one more book on uh, how to reconcile faith and uh, reason, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah. It's, the book is intended just to show, there is no agenda in a sense, but to show that this question, um, there is a preliminary question uh, or issue, which is to realize how much what we call rationality, and I think I, ca I take up uh, six domains, economic rationality, mm. military or strategic rationality, uh, uh, science and technology, uh, political, uh, okay, uh, yeah, there, is, there are six. Um, that what we call rationality is not undermined, but is um, full or is, um, pregnant is um, fraught, fraught with a good measure of the logic of the sacred. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not one pure reason uh, trying to, uh, as there are several versions in the usual story, trying to enter into a dialogue with, uh, with uh, religion as it is, or theology, etc., etc. Re um, reason is always already contaminated by the logic of the sacred. That's what I call the mark of the sacred. Yeah. To, to detect the mark of the sacred, whatever I mean by that, in what appears to be the, the heights of uh, rationality. Yeah. Um, and I do that in six different domains. Okay, so it's, uh, again, it's a <coughs> piecemeal approach. No, 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 no. Thank you very much for this question. Yeah, bec to because in France, that, I mean, yeah. the, the, public, uh, the discussion, public discussion of my book in, Fran in France was precisely made very difficult for me because most readers, it must be my fault, huh? I mean, the reader is always right in principle, uh, most readers understood um, that interpretation, that I'm advocating a return to the sacred. Yeah. Actually, it's not that I would be against, it's, it's, it's not, and for me, it's nonsense. I mean, it's, uh, there is no way, and because, because everything is contaminated, not by the sacred, but by the Christian message. And now I have a question for you, um, which is in a sense uh, very simple. Your interpretation of Christianity is so strong, so beautiful, so powerful, that why When you pray like this, I already see you behind your back, sharpening the knife, you know? Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, because I, f I forgot to <laughs> add that it's mine too. So if I were praising you, okay, you I want to kill yourself you also. I would, okay, uh, yeah, would yeah. praising Yeah. Uh, why don't you take the ultimate step, which, which is be uh, to become a Christian? Because I'm an atheist Christian. And I mean quite so seriously, it's not some cheap postmodern joke. For me, literally, the only way to be a consequent atheist is to go through that Christian moment, Father, <laughs> why have you forsaken me, and so on. You know, it's, as I repeated yesterday, it's not enough for us not to believe. The chicken, the self-transcendent moment, yeah. should not believe. L yeah. There, that's the problem. And I see this in this the absolute uniqueness of Christianity. Yeah, I, I can I can absolutely relate to that. But then I have another question. Um, it seems to me, but I, again, mm -hmm. I've not read everything that you wrote. Uh, that, and I'm, I'm mm. hasting to say that, uh, in a sense, I like that. Although liking mm. is not, uh, we are not mm. on uh, Facebook. Mm. Uh, liking, not liking. Mm. Um, 
you speak almost never, from what I've read, mm -hmm. uh, about the res resurrection. And you speak about the passion of Christ. And for me, the key element in Christianity is the passion of Christ much more than resurrection. Yeah. Okay, and now I have a, sub a series of sub-questions. Mm -hmm. Why, I mean, actually, you almost say it in this book at the beginning. Um, yesterday, you considered several possibilities how to interpret the um, passion of Christ, of the Christ. One would be um, um, God, Father, sacrificed his son, the usual story. Or, um, or um, what else? <coughs> or Christ s sacrificed himself, in a sense, gave his life for, for the salvation of the world. Or the, the most obscene Gnostic reading, which mm -hmm. I like, that if you accept the premise that God is a limited, stupid guy, yeah. that uh, sacrificing yeah. his son is a way, and I like this reading, although I don't take it too yeah. seriously, but it's beautiful, that it's God's apology to humans. Sorry that I screwed it so up the world with creation, I can just give you. Because otherwise, you must know this. This was a big problem in early centuries of Christianity. Why does God have to sacrifice his son? Yeah. Why? Because they, people usually t answer me because uh, there was sin and so on, sins have to be paid. No, this idea that above God there is some kind of sense of cosmic justice that even God has to obey, this is pagan idea. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. So it's a, then th the other popular version was that it's deal with the devil. Here, yeah. that yeah. God makes a deal with the <coughs> devil. I give you my son if you give a chance to. What I'm trying to tell you, sorry for interrupting you, is that this, why divine sacrifice? This is a big problem in Christianity, not even resolved today. Yeah, but now, I, yeah. there is a third version, third yeah. interpretation, which you mentioned in passing at the beginning of this yeah. book. Yeah. And, and, and which then is yours, or what? You like that one, or yours? Yeah. No, the, your book. I know, I know, but you said the third version. Uh, the third version, which is mine, to be yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's that Jesus' death on the cross was a sacrifice in the anthropological sense of the term that is a collective murder. And independently of uh, Jesus uh, or his father's uh, will or desire, etc., it was a collective murder. And let me take an, uh, an illustration of that. Uh, the problem with the interpretation of what happened on 9-11 in New York City and Washington um, is that, um, let me take the French reaction to that. The day after, uh, the Le Monde, the very important news, French newspaper, um, the t uh, titled, uh, uh, We Are All Americans. Okay, But a month later, there were people like Baudrillard and others who said, who wrote articles saying they had it coming. The Americans, they deserved it. And they added, even, um, what's his name, the, uh, the founder of uh, Nouvel Observateur, uh, anyway, uh, Pierre Noir, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 said the same. Um, um, uh, after all, we shouldn't hast hasten to condemn these guys, the 19 guys mm -hmm. of 9-11, too fast. Because, after all, they gave their lives for their cause. They sacrificed themselves. That sounds Christian. So in order, but it's absolutely, it's a perversion of, Christian, of Christianity. Uh, Illich used to say, Ivan Illich, and also René Girard, so by the way, uh, both of them uh, now or in the past, full-blown Christians, used to refer to the old Latin formula, um, corruptio optimi pessima. That is the corruption of the of the best is the worst, mm. huh? and they explain like Chesterton, by the way, mm. uh, the modern world as being shaped by the Christian message, but the corrupt version mm. of the Christian message, and the corrupt version of the Christian message in this case is precisely to consider that if you sacrifice your life, like the people, uh, the the guys, the terrorists of 9/11, then it's hard to condemn you. Huh? But uh, what I propose is to say that 9/11 was a collective murder. Uh, and that Jesus' passion on the Christ was also, a c c it was a sacrifice in the anthropological sense, I repeat, a collective murder. 
Okay, I'll tell you where where I deeply uh, ag- first about that had it coming moment. Also, yeah. I also wrote a very short book, Welcome to the Desert of the Real, obvious reference to the Matrix movie. But there, I try to think both aspects together. On the one hand. It is true that it's the same as with, I always like this example, Titanic. Do you know, one almost gets superstitious, that four or five years ago, sorry, (laughs) before Titanic was sunk, Sunk. there was a novel in which, which tells the story of a hyper mega luxurious ship, which gets, hits the iceberg and gets sunk, and in the novel, the name of the ship is Titan. (laughs) So it is as if (laughs) it was of the, in the air. Only in this sense, they had it coming. That obviously what happened, even if it was shocking, was somehow in the air as an expectation. That's as far as I go. But in no (laughs) way would I play this game where incidentally Baudrillard joins hands with the utmost American perverts that I like. You know, Pat Robert, this is my secret if you want to know what I'm reading privately. Pat Robertson, then those left behind jerks, you know, Tim LaHaye and so on, all that, who said the same thing. Yes, yes, I know, I know. The, uh, so uh, I totally reject that. Now let's go to the more important point. I like very much what you said that the optimal corruption is corruption of the good, I often quote, I think it was that Steven Weinberg of the first three seconds, the quantum, sorry, the quantum yes. cosmologist, yes. who I don't agree with him totally. My God, I wrote three, four books celebrating the uh, uh, emancipatory core of uh, Christianity. But nonetheless, there is an element of truth in what he says there. He said very simply that without religion, good people would have been doing good things and bad people bad things. But you need something like religion to make good people do bad things. And this is my personal experience. Uh, Also, I would just, as an old platonic guy, add poetry. It gave me to think how, you know, Radovan Karadzic is a poet, leader of sir. And then I noticed that uh, if you go to Rwanda, I discovered a Karadzic there. I quote his name in some of my books. There was a big national poet who for two decades laid the ground for that uh, uh, Tutsi, Hutu, slaughter and so on. That is to say, because I'm sick and tired that we philosophers are accused usually, you know, like, you know, like even here I disagree with Levinas, who said, and even Adorno thinks the same, that the origin of political totalitarianism is the philosophical notion of totality from, you know, like we philosophers with our total rational visions, we lay the foundations. I say, but what about poets? Every totalitarian system, they need a poet or a religious thinker, mythologist, because again, to make good people do bad things, you need some kind of a transcendent monstrous vision, which then allows you (coughs) to to feel great, noble, precisely by violating elementary ethical norms. You know who? It should be reprinted as a classic. One of the most monstrous texts that I know, the famous Heinrich Himmler speech in Posen, Poznan to Nazi officers, where he basically says, every idiot can sacrifice his life for a high cause. Yeah. But it takes a really great man to sacrifice his soul to do horrible things for the cause. And that's the true greatness. And you can find the same logic, although I don't uh, put them on the same level, not at all, in Stalinism. I remember how in at the end of 20s, when this most terrible thing happened, which was the true revolution, much more radical than October revolution, the forced collectivization yeah. of farms. Yeah. And how they prepared communist cadre to do it. The idea was, beware, you will be doing horrible things there. You will see farmers, children starving and so on. But the true ethical greatness is to do it yeah, yeah. nonetheless. So here, uh, <coughs> here I would follow your line, if I got it between the lines, that uh, nonetheless, following Girard, okay, it's a collective murder, but 
nonetheless, you know what Girard says about it, that it's nonetheless more paradoxical, is that it's uh, anti-sacrifice at the same time, Christ. They sacrifice change. to end? He changed his mind. Uh, That's a first Girard. And really? Then he changed on, his mind. Oh, yes, completely. No, when I get now his, my say, hands on me in a good Stalinist way, he will change his mind again. No, 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 but <laughs> I think he was wrong to change. I agree with you. I mean, he, he was wrong <coughs> to change his mind on this. And now he ex well, now he's completely unable to speak. Yeah, because, him. again, but I think, and this kind of thing is what you said, you know, uh, the most tricky sacrifice is to sacrifice yourself for a cause, even if it's a, and I, as if, and that's the almost a definition of perversion, as if by sacrificing for the cause, you can redeem the cause, you know. Uh, uh, so I claim that here we should be Kantians. You are not just responsible in the sense of let's do anything for the cause. You are also responsible for the cause itself. I think that what authentic Christian and also Kant's ethic uh, prohibits is to use the cause as an excuse. You know, yeah, when yeah. you can say, oh, it's horrible <laughs> what I'm doing, but fuck it. It's for a Stalinist communist. It's a historical necessity, whatever. No, you never are allowed to use, one can even put it in tautological terms, to use doing duty as an excuse to, to do duty. You have to keep be absolutely responsible for it. Yeah. And here, that would be my <coughs> friendly criticism of Hannah Arendt. Uh, here, I think she comes too close to somehow endorsing critically, of course. You know, when Eichmann said, uh, oh, I was, I was a Kantian. For yeah. me, yeah. the voice of Hitler was the voice of ethical duty. I just followed my duty. No, you cannot say this. You cannot blame the big other. You are totally responsible also uh, uh, yeah. for your duty. Yeah. You know, that's why, to go to the return, the question of resurrection. Yeah. I'm here, maybe I'm simplistic and so on, but I think all that stuff of Christ returning afterwards, it's a kind of a, a zombie obscene version. Yeah. If yeah, I were to be a Christian, I would burn those, uh, what are the last texts of the Bible, all the apocalyptic stuff. Yeah, In sure. my Stalinist yeah. universe already, the Gospel of John uh, kind of uh, <laughs> disappears. You, you should notice, reading closely, that it's the Gospel of John, which is the first one, the only of the Gospels which comes close to anti-Semitism even already. Yeah, it's the yes. dangerous one. So my point is, I follow here the Bible. You know, the crucial point for me is when uh, 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 disciples ask Christ, how will, you, will we know when you will return? And he gives a simple, beautiful answer. When there will be love between the two of you, I am there. I will return. Yeah. For me, really? Holy Spirit is already a return. It's a pure obscenity to look for something more, some living dead, uh, uh, like Christ coming <laughs> up and returning. Holy Spirit is it. Yeah. Nothing yeah. more. And Holy yeah. Spirit, it's clear. It's for me, now I provoke you, the protoform of Communist Party. In what sense? You know when Christ says, the famous, he's with his disciples and somebody comes and says, oh, your mother is there, blah, blah, and he says, no, my family is here. And all the stuff about if you don't hate your father, mother, you're not my follower. No, it's not some stupid sadism. I think that when Christ mentions their mother, father, it's simply a shortcut for social hierarchy. I think he is not saying hate your father, but hate your father in so far as he stands for symbolic hierarchy of a social order, the hope, the really good news of Holy Spirit is that an egalitarian emancipatory community which bypasses social hierarchy is possible. That's the really great news. So I get this, for me, resurrection is Holy Spirit already. It's a total mistake of perspective to look for something okay. more, some creepy guy coming out of grave again. Maybe it's too simplistic a reading, yeah, no, but that's but Anyway, reading. that's what you confirmed what I was simply surmising, yeah. that resurrection for you is not certainly not the, the hinge. I mean, the okay, uh, it is, but it already thing. happens. It is yeah. there in Holy oh, but Spirit. Yes, okay, but it's a different, yes, it's not the zombie story. It's the... Uh, Although there is something beautiful in this zombie story, it's that the uh, disciples do not recognize him, and he has exactly the same traits, features, than before. 
and they do not recognize him. Okay, but I know, no, I know, and yes, also, yeah, and do you know why? This is why I like. <coughs> there was a remake of Romero, one of those movies, uh, 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 Return of the Dead, whatever. Yeah, where it uses a certain quote from Apocalypse, which is for me extremely obscene. It speaks about a resurrection of the dead, and it describes it precisely in the sense of horror movies, like uh, graves will be open, uh, dead people <coughs> will arise, and so on and so on. I think there is, in Hegelian yeah. sense, there is a kind of a mistake of perspective. But there, there is that you find that already in uh, Jeremiah, for instance, huh? Who? the, uh, the Val Jeremiah, the prophet. Ah, yeah, 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 Jeremiah, Jeremiah. yeah, yeah, and the the the, 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 the death. The, the resurrection of the Death Valley. I mean, no, you do not. Okay, sorry. You see, we, they are not a Christian. Yeah, nation. yeah. Obviously, they, they pre haven't pretend to uh, be, but they are uh, not. Neither yeah, Christian yeah. or Jews, because after all, Jeremiah, it's in the Old Testament. But okay, doesn't we'll matter. We'll move to uh, I, no, 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 but I okay. just want sure, to illustrate what uh, mm -hmm. what Slavoj said. Mm -hmm. That's why I always thought that uh, David Fincher was a great movie maker because his first movie illustrates exactly the point you made a few minutes ago. You mean uh, uh, seven, Alien? Seven. Uh, yeah, seven. No, but didn't he do before? One, uh, it plays with exactly the same logic. Yeah. And I think it's a masterpiece, although <laughs> it was a failure. Uh, uh, a Alien 3, you remember? That's true, right. he did that. He did it's that. incredibly good. Yes, I, I agree. And it goes but precisely into this cloning, resurrecting, and exactly. so on. Exactly, but Seven, you, you remember yeah. the theme. It's uh -oh. uh, the uh, Kevin Spacey, who once more incarnate embodies evil, um, Not as evil as in House of Cards. But no, 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 no. That's another. <laughs> yeah, uh, but as in uh, as in uh, the original suspect by Dav David uh, uh, by uh, Singer. Uh, yeah, Brian Singer. Brian Singer. This is a great movie. This also. is also a great movie. But anyway, so the seven seven that means the seven yeah. sins. Yeah. And the and um, the devil that is Kevin Spacey sacrifices his life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To he, he because he's killed out of Brad Pitt's envy, huh? yeah. because he killed his wife, as you remember. It's a uh, very uh, nice Hegelian movie, because but yes. Brad Pitt doesn't get that his own death of Kevin is included in exactly. the you know. Exactly, he, 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 yeah, yes. yeah. So you too, I mean, we, we love cinema. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I think Christopher Nolan is overestimated. I think that... Uh, oh, yes, yes. Yes, I think that, uh, that David Fincher is better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Question from David. So I, I, I Except that desire, as I said yesterday, the etymology of the word desire yeah. means the absence of the star. The privative, the deprivation, desiderare in Latin, sider, sidral, uh, what are the words in English that come from me? Sider, sidral, sider. Okay, anyway, sideration, when you are stunned, you don't say you are struck no, no. by a star? Okay, no. anyway, and sider in, in, uh, in Greek means star. So desire, they see there, they uh, <coughs> are deprived of the star. Mm. Eh? It's the absence of the star that guides you, in a sense. That, uh, uh, no, uh, but, uh, but I think that precisely here I'm on his side, that uh, with drive, with drive, uh, this is the big uh, uh, Lacanian theological problem. Lacan says that object, l'objectia is object cause of desire, but also the object of drive. So how do they differ? And I think that it's in the drive that, in a way, the object is no longer an entity, but just become the top topological term of turning around. Okay. So it's, in a way, you accept the void. You no longer are running after an object, but running around the void in itself brings satisfaction and so on. So I don't think that here you would, I mean, I appreciate no, no. your, you being paid by reactionary forces for trying to oh, yeah. drive an edge between <laughs> the two of us. And <laughs> no, 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 you no, will no. be, when no. we take power, you will be able to explain this to secret police, write confession. How, no, but quite seriously, I am bothered by this because now I will be frank. 
I'm not idealizing us as a couple. There are differences, <laughs> but yeah. it's difficult to no. locate them. No, no, I, because I whenever I look well, closely, I discover yeah, yeah. It, it, it's well, not there. In terms of influences, I noted down here in the last page of the book um, that your Marx was my Illich, your uh, Lacan was Girard, your Vertigo was and still is my Vertigo, uh, your Argentina yeah. For me, is Brazil. I agree My with you. Hegel, uh, your Hegel is for me David K. Lewis, the um, yeah, the th theory of possible worlds and uh, counterfactual. Ah, no, but he is a great one. I yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know, yeah. And my Christianity is yours, I would say. Yeah? Um, and you know, anyway, if I if even if I wanted to be a, a Catholic, I couldn't because of the last uh, five popes, at least, because <laughs> I'm a divorced man, living living in sin, living living uh, maritally. Yeah, but you know what? For so me, the best definition, you must yes, have I'm heard serious. a joke. There is a truth in it. We say in my country between Protestantism and Catholicism. Yeah. In both systems, you can do absolutely whatever you want. In Catholicism, you only have to confess it every week. Yeah. In Protestantism, you have to feel a little bit bad and guilty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is okay. It's yeah. no. no, but seriously, I am absolutely, maybe this is our difference. I don't know th that if I were to choose between Protestantism and Catholicism, well, uh, I'm for, be in Protestantism, you have predestination. And yeah. without predestination, this stupid, obscene idea that you're good works yeah. can help redemption. Yes, 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 this yes. is an obscenity, oh I no, mean. But I, uh, again, I agree with you. If I had to choose, if it were possible, it made sense But now, that's why I we love Pascal. Isn't it that, that Jean Zenith Jean were Zim the only Catholics exactly. who were also for predestination? Exactly. Absolutely true. So I'm a Pascalian, a quasi-Protestant. Yeah, yeah. I might be a Jew, uh, a Jew too, huh? if I had to choose, let's say. My destiny, precisely. My past. Yeah, but you know what I don't like about the Jews, sorry, now I'll be again <laughs> accused of anti-Semitism, that even if we play all these Kafka games, Messiah will arrive too late, will not, yeah. they still, they are too much future-oriented. Yeah. What I like is yeah. this pessimist message, you, it already happened, fuck it, it's yeah. over, you know. Yeah. This yeah. is what I like about Christianity. It's not again bullshitting us with some... <laughs> Uh, messianic moment, nothing will happen. What happened is already happened. Uh, it already happened. We are in deep shit, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, by the way, that should lead to your questions, uh, sir. Huh? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we have two questions. It was you. Oh, me? No, 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 no you, you. The, yeah. huh? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Not the Arab terrorists there. Because I all Irish people have beard like you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, you and let's not forget the, your question. This is a bad taste, Stalinist globe, you know this, yeah. <laughs> so this was in 2002. Could you elaborate on this thought? Uh, have your thoughts on this changed any in, in recent times? And how would you see uh, extraneous church, church architecture best used? The only, okay, I will just <laughs> give you very briefly a paradoxical crazy answer. I will say that, and I've written about it, you, uh, the most horrible, what I always hated is the obscenity of this cultural tolerance. What beautiful ancient monuments. But you treat them as dead. There is nothing. Uh, I wrote, you remember when Taliban were bombing those Buddhist statues. Yeah. But at least for them, this was a threat. One religion fighting another. In a way, they showed more respect to Buddhism then this cultural approach, you know, oh, what a beautiful monument to human inventiveness. I am just afraid of this cultural respect, you know. This is, I think, the worst thing you can do. And maybe can I, because we are approaching the end, mm. just briefly answer your question, the first directed at me. Working through Christianity, suffering Christ, uh, concluded difficult human love is the core of our being. Okay, very briefly, yes, but... And my bat is how to <coughs> how to uh, define this difficult human uh, 
La, in here I am uh, at the same time uh, Kierkegaardian or whatever you want. And uh, Kierkegaard said some so crazy things. Like when he said the true Christian love for a neighbor is you should love him as if he is dead. You know that. Yeah. Love for a neighbor is dead. No, my point is this one. How to unite this? And I think it's not simply you have this and that. Uh, uh, you know when Christ says, uh, 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 you know, if you have a shirt, sell it by weapon. I bring, I don't bring peace, the I bring sword. Uh, the sword. The sword and so on. In what sense, but not in some pseudo-Buddhist sense of, you know, the sword of mercy. For me, Christian love is an extremely engaged position of active struggle. Yeah. It brings division. It's not love as unity. It's love that brings division. And that's important more than ever today. Yeah. When yeah. the predominant dominant ideology is what we usually, ref what I ironically refer to as uh, Western Buddhism, you know, this Richard Gere stuff, you know, slightly, basically, that's why it's so popular. You can just go on living as it is. You just should do it with a little bit of inner distance and so on, you know. No, I think that this message of Christ, Again, to unite, to redefine love as a position of active engagement. Struggle is a form of love. This is for me crucial how to define it today. In this sense, I'm not saying we should all be just uh, uh, that suffering Christ, but don't, don't forget the other Christ with all those paradoxical statements yeah. and... Uh, Sorry. If I can add just one it illustration of what you've just said, the uh, turning the other cheek, yeah. it's exactly that. It's not a peaceful at all. It's to destabilize yeah. your adversary. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> expecting you to strike back, and you turn the other cheek. So for two, three seconds, it's completely uh, powerless. And that's when you strike. It's the same as, uh, sorry, yeah. one, uh, another movie that uh, I hope we like. Uh, uh, how is that one, Michael? Again, with Brad Pitt, uh, Fight, Fight Club. Club. The I most know. shocking scene then, you remember when Ed Norton yeah. approaches his boss and instead of hitting him, he strikes exactly. back at him. And it's the most painful, incredibly subversive <coughs> thing. That, that, that's the way we should follow. The usual suspects too, that's in your, one of your books. Uh, when yeah. uh, Kaiser Soze kills its, uh, his own family. Uh, yeah, yeah. The terrorists yeah. are there yeah. and then yeah. they are completely destabilized. Uh, if we can, we'll take one last question from yeah. the Meta Voice. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I just I wanted to ask one one question, which has to do with the way that that much of your discussion has revolved around the specificity of Christianity. Yeah. Because I think you know, and this might be one place where perhaps there's a difference between the two. Ah, you know, the sacred, sure. <laughs> it, the sacred is is a certain kind of formal abstraction, let's say language, and it seems to me that Slavoj, where you keep returning to is a kind of an interest in one particular <coughs> language, say the, not English, uh, it's the language as Christianity is to the sacred, a particular instantiation. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I know you've said a couple of times that uh, you have to go through Christianity of this version in order to arrive at the secular. There's a version of that that could be true that would be a little bit like <coughs> civilizing. One must go through sort of uh, the, uh, the theological forms of Christianity in order to have a modern state. Right, yeah, because yeah. the state is modeled on the political mm -hmm. theology uh, of sovereignty, or perhaps the market again as a sort of a natural law that's mm -hmm. derived from a certain kind of a sort of Christian project. But if that's the case, it seems to me that that analysis actually does tend to pre presuppose a fixed path, a particular pathway that leads to a sort of the secular world of the state and the market. And so the question I have which comes out of, say, the other work that's been going on in the WellSec project and other sites mm -hmm. where people are thinking very hard about other forms of religiosity, about Islam, mm -hmm. about Buddhism, about uh, 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 Hinduism, and are asking the question whether, in fact, there are pathways through sort of like alternative particularities and histories of the sacred that nevertheless can converge with the sort of, say, the kind of theology, secular theology of the market, the secular theology of the state that yeah. we have, yeah. uh, you know, that we're kind of contending with, where it doesn't really matter what you make into the endogenous endpoint. It doesn't yeah. have to be Christian in form. It could take some other form, so long as it sort of produces the, the yeah. circle yeah, yeah. between the two. So I'm just sort of putting that out there. What does it? Does Christianity really matter at all? 
Yeah. Or can anything be substituted in as a kind of a... Uh, a <laughs> no, no. Okay, please. please uh, because uh, it's uh, then you really have the concluding yes, yes. word. Yes. Well, Here, okay, <laughs> my God. Fuck it, I have to run to the airport. I don't have time. <coughs> Here, I will just state my position. No, I think, again, not at the level of content, but at the very formal level, there is something unique in Christianity. But uh, so when you mention this presupposition and so on, here I think two things. First, if there is a title for which I would be ready to kill, that I find one in Walter Benjamin, is the title on of his essay on language in general and specifically human language. Because this doesn't mean there are general languages of stars, of animals, and among... No, there is only one language. But you, we have to distinguish the <laughs> purely formal aspect and human language. In, and in, into this gap I locate, when you talk about language, Hegel knew this clearly. And the Austrian writer, I found her too tasteless, I even don't like her, Elfriede Jelinek, she nonetheless said something wonderful, which I repeatedly quote. She said that language spontaneously I is lying. We have to torture language to make to squeeze out the truth out of it. And here would be my formal problem with at least a tendency is Heidegger, as if you know, l allow, let the language speak and so on. No, I think le it's wrong to look for some deeper truth in language. Language, we cannot think outside language. Only within, but we have to think in language against language. And uh, my only point would be this one to you. <coughs> it's not only Christianity. The problem would already have been Judaism. I think that Christianity is inherently linked to Judaism. It's only possible against the background of Judaism. And I think an incredible break happens already in Judaism. But we don't have time now to go into this. No, no. <laughs> but just one sentence to, it's, um, I think, uh, I, but probably uh, Slavoj, I don't know, uh, belong to a tradition where you find names like uh, Durkheim, uh, Tocqueville, uh, uh, Max Weber, of course, uh, uh, etc. Um, which contends that Christianity is the um, end of religions. Huh? It's the end of religions. Uh, Max Weber, for about pr Protestantism, said that it was the responsible for the Entzauberung der Welt, the hmm? uh, so translated yeah. disenchantment, but literally it means the elimination of magic. Zauber, yeah. Zauberflöte, the magic mm -hmm. flute. Uh, so, disagree disagregation of the world, etc. Um, so there is something absolutely specific about Christianity. I fully agree. Uh, and it could, uh, could not have been replaced by anything else. Um, but maybe, uh, okay, it's, uh, we have no time now. Uh, I think for me, this re the revelation is the, um, which in Greek, as you know, the word revelation, it's in Greek, it's apocalypse. Mm -hmm. huh? Apocalypse means re uh, revelation. It doesn't mean the big bang at the end. <coughs> Revelation is the passion of the Christ, precisely. Uh, not it, his re resurrection or whatever. It's the passion of Christ. What do we? L what did we learn from that? Um, but this message, unfortunately, was corrupted, as uh, you were saying. Uh, but before. not. I hope we agree with here. I nonetheless don't follow the idea, which is now popular, with so-called historicizing Christians. Oh, yeah. That it's the ra like uh, uh, Aslan Zilot, know that it's the original Christ, and then Paul is the big bad guy. No, no I no, think no. Paul oh, yes. is still oh, yes, in. Yes, yes. Corruption happens uh, <coughs> afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just to get back to, to be as specific as possible, do you think economistification actually is dependent upon the specificity of a Christian theology? Or could it take some no, uh, my, my thesis in the, uh, is uh, in actually in the new book um, is um, that um, the economy has the same relationship to violence than the sacred had. But it doesn't mean that the economy is sacred. No. And this relationship is a relationship of ambivalence. And I use, uh, I resort to the play on words to contain, 
you know, to contain means at the same time to have within oneself and to keep in check, to uh, stem. Huh? So the economy contains violence. It's violence, it's violence, but it's also, uh, um, it keeps to some extent, or it used to keep violence in, in check in the same way, or the same way, not in the same way, but the same role as the sacred played by containing violence in the, yeah, violence in the sacred. So now it's the economy and the sacred. When I say, uh, oh, wait, no, we have no time to talk about that. Sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. So I propose the only solution, because we have so many things to say, that fuck it, we come back again. <laughs> 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 no, 